Stef Verbeek is partner and brand strategist at Pavlov, a niche consultancy specialized in brand strategy, customer experience and brand identity, based in Antwerp, Belgium. I've invited him to talk about his latest book, Relationship Renaissance, to find out if personal branding is suffering the same problem as company brands. Let's find out. Welcome to the Own Your Story podcast, the place to learn about personality branding, thought leadership and how to capitalize your reputation. In other words, how to own your story. I'm your host, Janka Vlerakas, former actress turned into six-figure entrepreneur, author and keynote speaker. Let's get started. Hey, Steph. Hi, Janka. I'm happy to have you as one of my guests in this uh, podcast, Own Your Story, because... Two things. You are uh, into personal branding far more longer than I am. 12 years ago, you started doing that. Uh, In in, in another case, I'm even longer doing it, but in another another career. But you also Mm -hmm. released, launched your fifth book. Exactly. The Relation Renaissance. I'm translating it in English now. (laughs) Relation (laughs) Renaissance. It's a Dutch book. Um, and uh, it made me curious and my goal for this conversation is to link your book with personal branding Uh, but it's not written for personal brands so I want you to explain me first or our listeners what the book is all about it's about relationships and uh, brands yeah exactly yeah it's um, it, it originated in the frustration I've been having for years um, that uh, digitalization, automization, rationalization has caused some sort of gap between brands and their target audiences, being it external stakeholders, internal stakeholders, and so on. Um, and I think that's a pity. I mean, the, 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 the timing is right. We're post-pandemic. We're pre-AI, actually. So it's, it's the right time for a brand or an organization to invest in human relationships. And um, this is something I see um, when we work with clients, but but uh, with organizations in general, that this gap is growing wider and wider. And it's quite ironic, actually, because you would think that all the technology and possibilities we have today allow us to be closer than ever. Mm-hmm. And in fact, most of the time we see the complete opposite. And so Relationship Renaissance, eh, when I translate my title, is exactly about that, is um, um, explaining where this phenomena occurs and why it occurs which myths uh, we use to believe that there's something like, for instance, a digital client or uh, uh, an online way, pure online way of doing business. Um, And I I debunk all those myths and explain to brands how they can become love brands again, personal brands again, in another uh, meaning of the word. eh? So uh, becoming personal, human, close by, uh, emotional, uh, and taking care of these relationships, which is very, very important. And I believe that um, the brands of the future, the successful brands of the future, are not those brands that, that succeed in digitalizing or, or using AI in, in the best way. Uh, I believe that the, the winning brands of tomorrow are those who succeed in cre- creating long-lasting relationships. So it surprises me that you're telling me that because I thought that marketing was really working hard to humanize brands and company brands, but something is going wrong. I wouldn't say something's going wrong. I mean, they they invest in it and they, they put a lot of effort in it. Uh, but sometimes it's it's no more than, you know, a lick of paint eh, on the surface. Eh? Um, what we see in reality is that they invest in a lot of things, uh, marketing messaging wise. Mm-hmm. So their campaigns are human centered. They invest in in specific profiles, for instance, a customer's, customer happiness officer. Uh, we've seen the rise of yeah. those in the last uh, decade, Um, they invest in optimizing customer journeys, which is all good. It's a good thing. Uh, But we see in reality is that they all claim to be customer centric. Um, But then in in daily operations, they're really rational thinkers. Uh, Mm -hmm. Most managers are rational thinkers rather than emotional thinkers. And so they invest in things that have immediate return, which uh, relationships don't really have and they span over a longer period of time so the results also uh, are over mm-hmm. a longer period of time and so they're really not that customer centric as they would like to be or think to be eh? so they most of the time they're really rational 
-hmm. And most of the time, organizations still seem to be stuck in some sort of organization-centric thinking, uh, yeah. which won't allow for real relationships to, uh, to yeah. evolve. So, so I think what you're actually trying to say is let's go back to the old days where we really had to meet one another and see one another face-to-face -face and have real uh, connection. Is that what you're actually saying? We need true connection again? We need true connection again. First of all, we need to understand others again. And uh, this is also um, a strange phenomenon. There's there's um, more opportunity than ever to understand those we do business with, our mm -hmm. customers, our clients. Um, there's more data available than ever before. So it shouldn't be that much of an effort. Yeah. Um, yet most companies don't really understand their clients and they don't really understand why they buy. They know this on a rational level. For instance, they know they're cheaper than another uh, competitor. They know they mm -hmm. offer a certain products uh, people can't really copy or competitors can't really copy. But when you really look at why people buy from your company, they um, tend to forget that this has a lot to do with emotion, psychology. Uh, most of the time, customers don't really know themselves why they, they prefer a certain brand. So this is... a it's actually the holy grail of branding, finding that out, you know, which yeah. which emotional triggers uh, yeah. exist in order to make people like your brand, like your company and like what you offer. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing all the thinking um, why this relationship renaissance is necessary for brands and companies. Now, I was thinking, how can we relate that to personal branding? Why am I um, challenging you to think about that? That's because um, I have the opinion of the idea that personal branding nowadays is more often an online thing. It's about gaining mm -hmm. followers online, be becoming <clears throat> famous on LinkedIn, and um, having the right keywords and the way of writing and following the, right, the, the biggest content creators, etc., etc. Et and... For me, personal branding is an online, but also a more, more important offline thing. And people forget that. So how can you, we use your ideas of the relationship renaissance for personal branding? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm not 100% agreeing with what you're saying there. Because oh, for me, personal branding, yeah, it, it has shifted to, to mm -hmm. an online of course, eh? and you mm -hmm. see this in, in, in influencer uh, marketing, you see this in, in how we use LinkedIn, and you and mm -hmm. I use LinkedIn like that mm -hmm. as well. Um, but for me, personal branding is about making you, yourself or your, your individual brand as a person, making this mm -hmm. visible to others. And mm -hmm. today, the easiest way to do that is online. Yes. But in order to do business with others, you need to make sure that it spans beyond your, your efforts span beyond the online realm. Mm -hmm. um, when I do business as a, as a consultant in my profession, uh, most referrals or most interesting discussions, I don't have those online. I have those um, offline and mm -hmm. cl classic uh, traditional networking mm -hmm. environments. Um, but what you see is that for me, LinkedIn acts like a loop. Right? It acts mm -hmm. like uh, uh, a medium that makes it easier for me to spread my message than it was before. Right? When I started yeah. in my profession 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I needed to rely on professional media, official press, journalists, and so on to spread my word right? or my books or my other publications. So where are Today, you disagreeing what... with me? So what, where, on what point are you disagreeing? Well, I'm disagreeing when you say that for you, personal branding is an online thing. I'm not no, sure it's no, an online no, no. thing. No, I didn't say that. I say that. Ah, okay. To me, it seems like personal branding ah, okay, is an okay, online okay. thing. It's not well, it, it what shouldn't I'm be. thinking. It's, it shouldn't be. No. No, exactly, it's, exactly. It's okay, so we're on the same page. We're on the same page. It's being interpreted as an online issue, as an online thing, because most of them yeah. are saying you build your personal brand on LinkedIn or other platforms, but most for us it's on LinkedIn. And I don't agree. Yeah. It's like, like you said, it's a loop. It's a way of introduction. It's a way of of uh, exactly. getting things going but i know uh, a lot of personal brand who start people who started their personal brand on a stage or by writing books or like me yes. being on stage or being on television so it's just a medium where yeah. you start and then you have to broaden your scope and and get other platforms exactly. involved 
And that's the, that's the whole point. It's a medium, eh? and don't mm-hmm. you, you should never forget that it's only a medium. Eh? Yeah. Um, uh, it's one of the many tools in your belt, eh? many yeah. many ways of introducing people to who you are and why they should get to know you. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, for me, the real power is still in the offline uh, because mm-hmm. it has also something to do with with faking it. Eh? Online, you can fake it till you make it. We have all seen. Those twenty-eight-year-olds, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sitting on a Ferrari and claiming that they have made made millions of of, mm-hmm. of dollars or millions of euros. Uh, we've all seen the LinkedIn posts of supposedly uh, huge business eight people, eight-figure um, <laughs> yeah. eight yeah. earning, uh, yeah, yeah. get rich quick schemes. Yeah. They're all very successful. When you meet those people in person. It usually is a different story. Eh? So, mm-hmm. um, for me, online still today is 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 a medium that allows people to fake it until they make it, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you, you develop some sort of sixth sense when you see those profiles, especially on LinkedIn. And you can mm-hmm. you can uh, when you're active as much on uh, on LinkedIn as I am or you are, mm-hmm. um, you develop a sixth sense for this, and you see a lot of uh, yeah bullshit. Uh, pardon my mm-hmm. French. Uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, storytelling uh, you see them using certain scripts uh, to yes. provide uh, their followers yes. with content the authenticity there is a little bit gone and yeah but the it key still to works a great you know? personal brand is authenticity so uh, yeah i i know but what frustrates me is that you see that it still works you see the impact yeah. of scripts that are used over and over again and i'm wondering why do do people still believe in those scripts why do they well i, 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 I think they... yeah. as far as i can tell it only works for a certain uh, target audience i mean um, the average ceo doesn't fall for that kind of messaging right? mm-hmm. uh, they they use these platforms um, differently than than most of us uh, so so i think it depends who you want to um, who you want to connect with Yes, uh, that's a bad word. With. I'm saying target. That's yeah. the wrong word. That's the wrong verb. Connect. Well, it, it is targeting. In fact, it is yeah. targeting. In some in some sense, it is targeting. You you mm-hmm. you you're on LinkedIn with the the idea of the the, the ideal uh, follower or the ideal engager with your content. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's different for let's say a consultant who who targets uh, uh, solo entrepreneurs, for instance. I think they have more success with that kind of content than someone who targets uh, Fortune 500 companies or, mm-hmm. or larger businesses, uh, multinational businesses. Um, they look for different things. They have different motives to engage with you as a, as a, yeah. as a professional or as a content creator. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it works for everyone, huh? mm-hmm. um, which goes mm-hmm. for all these marketing tricks. Eh? It goes for classical yeah. advertising as well or traditional ways of uh, doing public relations. Uh, some people read newspapers, others never open one eh? so mm-hmm. uh, it all depends on who you who you're targeting and eh, to use the to use your word <laughs> i don't um, want to use that word and the message yeah, yeah. so um what is your preferred medium to to um to connect so we already uh, talked about online we've got the stage we've got of course the meetings etc but what on what level or what medium or what platform or whatever um do you can prefer to connect well, it, it shouldn't surprise you that I prefer face-to-face uh, relationships um, because I think they are more profound, they're more authentic, you know, mm-hmm. what kind of person you have in front of you, um, um, which which works. For, the, the, the thing that works for me and has been working for me for over two decades is uh, providing people with some sort of value, huh? mm-hmm. uh, whether you do it online or offline. Uh, I prefer to do it offline, but I also do it online, obviously, uh, using LinkedIn, using Instagram, using Twitter or X, as it's called now. Um, what worked for me the best over the, the past 20 years is being on stage, delivering keynote speeches, explaining what I do, um, mm-hmm. elaborating on customer cases, mm-hmm. uh, talking about research that I have read or even um, conducted myself uh, together with my colleagues. Um, uh, talking about my books and so on. This is the best way. Uh, I remember when I started in this profession, I walked into a room with 500 people and maybe I knew one or two people and I had to introduce myself to all the others. 
by being uh, an expert in my field, I was invited to speak at, at conferences in, 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 in Belgium and abroad. Mm -hmm. um, today, I don't have to introduce myself anymore. I walk into a room and usually hey. uh, a large chunk of those people know who I am, even yeah, though yeah. I don't know who they are. So it, yeah. it, it, it makes interaction so much easier. Yeah. Um, the same goes for online, but I still prefer the offline. For me, yeah. the, the Corona pandemic was... Yeah. was awful i mean uh, i i um i'm an extrovert uh, my wa my wife saw me depressed completely depressed uh, she said okay it's quality time with our kids and sure it was and i, I guess for a lot of people it was a, a, a yeah, quick ex months. escape from the rat race <laughs> yeah but the lockdowns for me were the worst i was depressed um yeah. i wanted to meet people i wanted to shake hands i wanted to hug people uh I'm an outgoing guy. I need to meet people uh, in order to, uh, yeah. my energy level depends on uh, me being outside, speaking to yeah. people, uh, being inspired by others. Uh, yeah. and, and the fact that I couldn't do that for so, uh, so many months in a row, it really, uh, yeah, it really got me down. Yeah, we were talking online now, so I'm hoping I can give some energy through the clouds and into your office. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. You're um, a ray of sunshine on this yeah, cloudy yeah, day. Yeah, really, <laughs> yeah, but I really, yeah. It's very hot in here, but nevertheless. Um, um, other thing I wanted to um, ask you. So you, you, the first two books were on personal branding. These were the first two books you wrote. What are the main things that has been changed since... So we're 10 to 12 years later. What are two okay, main things that changed in personal branding, according to you? I'm sorry, I didn't understand anything after the, the ray of sunshine <laughs> comment I made. <laughs> okay, that's because so you, you need froze. To, you need to, okay. I'll, I'll repeat you, the question. You need, so, you need to repeat the question. So, so okay. Um, uh, going back to your first two books you've ever written, so the two books on personal branding. Yeah. What are so it was ten to twelve years ago that you've written the book? Uh, first one was uh, two thousand ten. Uh, Mensen yeah. als merken, uh, yeah, human right. brands. Yeah. And the second and the third one, in fact, were two thousand thirteen. So yeah. it's ten years ago. So uh, you wrote those books on personal branding for the professionals. So in professional setting, when you take a look at personal branding now in in uh, mm -hmm. in a business setting. What are two important things, main things that have, that have changed for the better, for the worst in those 13 years? Well, that's a really good question and a question I, uh, I've been asked a few times over the past few years. I think um, the first thing that really changed is the concept of personal branding as in the perception here locally, nationally. When I wrote my first books or, or did my first keynotes on personal branding, it was even pre-2010, uh, people looked at me like I was some sort of alien. And they thought it was a yeah. concept for celebrities, uh, only mm -hmm. for Hollywood stars uh, or, or politicians who needed more votes. Uh, people even laughed me away sometimes when I spoke about what I was doing. Uh, didn't understand that I could make a living out of it. Uh, who pays for that? Who cares? People should take me as I am. Mm -hmm. um, this is a phenomenon that has decreased over the past uh, decade, uh, the past 10, yeah. 15 years. People understand the importance of a first impression. Mm -hmm. um, many came after me and perfected uh, how to uh, create a personal brand. Um, as a Belgian professional or a Belgian entrepreneur. So uh, it became more mainstream. And this is something that I really, really noticed. And that, that you yeah. know, it, may, it makes me happy because I yeah. see that people care about it and understand yeah. what it is. It doesn't mean yeah. uh, dressing like a robot or acting like something you're not. And yeah. a lot of the misconceptions are gone. So Yeah. Well, uh, well you, you're very positive on that point because for me that's because you come from nobody knows even nobody knows even the word <laughs> personal branding to they know the word personal branding uh for me yeah. um uh i started with it uh, I, I think a year ago because i thought it's not happening <laughs> they still don't get it mm. uh so from to me there's still a lot of work to be done there's still this idea especially here there, there is there is 
there's still absolutely there's still in that's the because world. you need to be famous and a celebrity and it's all about the dressing and it's all about the, the personal branding yeah. photo shoot etc so um i understand that you you come from somewhere the ice age <laughs> exactly yeah. it's exactly it, oh, it, it was a prehistoric uh, yeah. I, I speak like i'm from prehistoric times because it were prehistoric times yes, when it comes to personal branding in, in, uh, in nobody has setting, even yeah. heard yeah. yeah nobody had even heard of the concept and yes. when, we, when we first introduced this as a form of training uh, yeah. to larger companies they didn't understand what we were offering what do you mean you're going to train our people to become brands but we yeah. have a brand yeah. Uh, uh, and they are just, you know, our minions uh, doing their their day to day job. No, no, no. And you have to enable them. You have to support mm -hmm. them in building their own personal brand yes. in order to uh, increase your corporate brand value. And this this was a concept that uh, didn't exist back in the day. And it, it's and it still isn't because it's it's still what I'm preaching. True. And I said, why don't you? elevate your own employees to become a personal brand because that will elevate yeah. your brand it's, it's still there's still work to be done true still. but you know you know where i see the difference uh, between now and 10 years ago mm -hmm. um for instance in politics mm -hmm. we've worked with many 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 politicians over the years huh? um back in the day we were real evangelists eh? me and my mm -hmm. colleagues we had to explain to them in order to win elections in order to become a person who gets invited into news studios or mm -hmm. uh, uh invited to to write an opinion uh, for for a newspaper or a magazine you have to make sure they know you and they know you for the right reasons and you have to associate your brands with certain values that you claim to to deem important um today politicians are like rock stars uh, they, they, oh, they tend to be um, yeah, they tend to be yeah exactly and that's the second evolution and to get back to your earlier question the second evolution is of course the rise of online media and when i wrote my first book these media existed as well but i had to explain to people what the added value was of using mm -hmm. facebook for instance as yeah. a means of portraying who you are personal branding wise eh? mm -hmm. um, today people understand what the value of linkedin most people understand what the value of linkedin can be uh, understand that one one tweet can get you into a newspaper or on television um, this has changed as well and we we, yeah. we used to see it as an anomaly today we see it as quite normal and we see that people even earn their income earn their living um by yeah being a great personal brand online and this is this is a new phenomenon it didn't exist 10 yeah. years ago 15 yeah. years ago yeah. and again this you see this in politics as well eh? you see that uh, not only here eh? look at someone like donald trump for instance eh? uh, or even barack obama was the first real online presidential mm -hmm. uh, candidate in 2008 when he first won his uh, his first election was the first real personal brand with a personal campaign with a personal logo with uh, a message that that really worked for him and for his personal brand and for his voter audience and so people like that paved the way and, and made a real difference eh? and you yeah. can ask yourself the question if donald trump was not that much of a personal brand on his own before he went into politics uh, and and knew how these uh, uh systematics That's work would would he would he have been elected president eh? uh, we'll never know <laughs> We'll never know, and it's an open question uh, for yeah. the uh, listening audience uh, yeah. uh, to decide. Yeah. Uh, a couple of, I think a couple of weeks ago, um, I saw a post on your feed where, where you mm. were um, um, promoting your trip, your style trip to London. Uh, a style yes. trip to London for gentlemen. Uh, shopping mm -hmm. for their costumes, and I really loved the idea, and I was kind of. I felt pity though I wasn't a man because I thought, oh damn, I like those suits and 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 thought, yeah, I really like that. But there was this one person who said, "Well, it's just for the happy few and it's the elite, etc." And and I said, "So I thought by myself, so what? Maybe you don't even like to dress up or wear a suit." Mm -hmm. But what what struck me was that you you try to explain it and try to argument it that sure. it wasn't for the and i thought why why not everybody wants to do this not everybody likes to wear those clothes not everybody can appreciate it so sure. why should you 
Why? Why did you do that? Well, uh, I reacted because he called me arrogant because he says it's, it, it sounds real arrogant because I, I, I uh, promoted uh, those style trips, which I've been doing for years, might I add, um, by saying, yeah, uh, real gentlemen can join me. And he seemed to be offended by that eh? because I said uh, only real yeah, gentlemen yeah. and, and, and yeah, yeah, certain yeah. Uh, people of a certain standing can join me. I wanted to do it to make it sound a bit archaic and to make yeah. it sound a bit more posh than it really yeah. is. Because what it really is, is six to eight guys joining me to London. We go shopping, we go eating, we, go, we, we shop for, sure, we shop for traditional suits and ties, but also mm-hmm. for uh, casual wear. Not all of the participants of these trips are looking to buy suits. Huh? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the reason why I, I, I responded um, to set the record straight. And of mm-hmm. course, there's a stylistic way of uh, promoting this by saying, okay, you want to meet the prime minister or you want to look like King Charles, well, join me to London and I'll show you how to dress like them. Uh, yeah. But I'm well aware that not everyone uh, joining me on these trips is looking uh, for that kind of stuff. Uh, some of yeah. them don't like shopping at all. Uh, in fact, most of them don't like shopping at all. They just join me because it's with some other guys and oh, you yeah. know, I help them making choices color-wise, fit-wise. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, I show them my favorite idea. brands. I think it's a great idea because because the the, the dressing and, and getting styled is it's always a women's thing. So I'm happy, very happy that you you are changing that and um, visiting yeah. those uh, so those uh, traditional tailors. I think it's great. I think it's uh, it is not, not <laughs> it absolutely is. And I started I started to do this yeah. on my own with my ex wife. Yeah. In fact, we went to London. She was very very small, uh, one meter fifty. Yeah. Uh, I'm a yeah. small skinny guy, so we didn't find what we wanted here. And yeah. by complete accident, we discovered what we could buy in London. It was a lot cheaper. We had lots of options. Uh, we didn't have to have things tailor made because you can buy them off the rack your size mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, I like to wear, I don't know if you can see it on camera, these yeah. small yeah. Uh, uh, cufflinks, uh, shirts like that. If you want to buy them here, you need to go to a specialty store that sells bridal wear and stuff like that for men. Yeah. Uh, there you yeah. can find them in any shirt shop. Huh? So, uh, And because people commented me on my uh, looks and my style, they said, okay, uh, can we join you? And I thought, sure, why not? And I'll even assist you in buying the right things. And I'll show you. Mm-hmm. You go there with, a, with an empty suitcase and you will return with half a wardrobe of new stuff. And you know it will fit you and know it it will be right Mm -hmm. for you. And you know it will be conveying the right message, personal Mm -hmm. branding wise, because I will Mm -hmm. help you with that. Mm -hmm. And what are other things you do to um, to build your personal brand? So you 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 dress, you you specifically dress yourself a certain way, you use a certain uh, um, accessoires. Are there other things you do to um, really get your personal brand out? Well, for me, it's all about content. So uh, I, I live branding, I breed branding, uh, corporate branding most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I see things that I, uh, when I notice things that are good or bad, branding wise, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll elaborate. Um, um, uh, keynote speeches, lots and lots of keynote speeches and workshops uh, that they invite me, uh, yeah. conferences everywhere. And of course, my books. Eh? Uh, I'm already thinking about my sixth and my seventh uh, <laughs> book. I'm not sure if anyone wants to read them, but uh, I always like have them. ideas or things that, yeah. that are, are rushing through my mind. Yes. And, and so uh, this content helps me build my personal brand, but also helps me build the brand I work for eh? because mm-hmm. my, my company offers branding services, brand consultancy. Um, so it, 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 um, it pushes me, it, 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 um, you know, there's a, there's a sort of obligation to, to keep up to date with what's going on in my field. Uh, so it's good for me as a personal, personal brand, yeah. Eh? uh, yeah. on my own website as an author, a keynote speaker, a podcast maker. Uh, on the one hand, and it's good for my clients and and, and mm-hmm. lead generation uh, business wise mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's the way it goes. And so dressing the part is one of the things. Uh, creating the right content is one of the things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll try to be as generous and uh, nice as I can be uh, to people. 
asking me for a quick advice or uh, wanted to talk with, to me uh, on conferences and so on. So mm -hmm. I like to see myself as an outgoing person, eh? someone who, yeah. who mingles in crowds and, and, and meets lots of people. And mm -hmm. I always hope that they, they like meeting me. Uh, yeah. at least once well I would like to meet you at least once in real life <laughs> no, all right we've met each other we'll get that so. sorted out no well, no problem no problem out. so okay we're at the end of our conversation and there's one thing um, I need your help with um, right. I always wish my uh, guests the best of luck all success mm -hmm. they want they long for and the best in their lives but I do this in a way actors wish each other good luck before they get on stage and they do it in an unconventional way they do it the other way around it's like the knock on wood idea mm -hmm. if you say okay so i'm going to give you three options in which we as actors say wish each other good luck and you have to choose one of them the first All one right. is the first one is break a leg Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second one is, is coming from a French uh, swear word, merde, dikke merde. And the okay. third one comes from a Yiddish incantation, and that is toy, 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 or <laughs> also t -t 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 -t. Okay. So, take a pick. <laughs> Which one do you choose? Well, the second one, because it reminds me of my French-speaking father. And so I grew up, this man was... Uh, um, uh, university professor uh, and the few times I've seen him angry or upset uh, that was his favorite word uh, so uh, we could hear it all through the house merde quand même. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of merde as a as a but way of me, expressing something and I, yeah. I didn't know it it was for good luck as well so yeah. uh, I'll, I'll try yeah. to remember that and even use it in such uh, such a way okay thank you for being my guest Steph and dikke merde Thanks for having me and Dikke Mecht right back at you. <laughs> Thank you.